only 2% actually have hardware wallets. Holding your own Bitcoin is, is superior to anything else. Exchange DMM Bitcoin got hacked of $300 million worth of Bitcoin. Bitcoin was built as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. What if Apple account as Bitcoin? Definitely. Um, I want to talk about what you just launched uh, today, but before I want to talk uh, sure. about that, uh, when you gave the presentation, there was one fact standing out for me that mm -hmm. only 2% actually have hardware wallets, like 2% of Bitcoiners or crypto, was it crypto or Bitcoin? Uh, crypto and Crypto, Bitcoin. like 2% of crypto people have a hardware wallet, which mm -hmm. was shocking for me. I knew it was low, but 2% seems for me like really low. Um, why do you think is, that is? Um, I think maybe, I mean, there are a couple of hypotheses that, that, that I have, but of course I might be wrong, but I think maybe uh, hardware wallets have, have had uh, this sort of um, almost like a f positioning on the market or, you know, the broader audience would think it's something that's hard to use. Maybe it's, you know, it's only for techies or, you know, it's not really user friendly. And I think both us and honestly even our competitors i think they are proving that that's not no longer the case with every new device you know that one of us basically releases and so i hope you will see basically broader adoption of, of hardware wallets you know because just have to i think we have to ed educate users as well because the other the other reason might be simply users are or customers or cryptos or whatever we call them so be scared of you know protecting their pri private keys like i mean in terms of the backups um but again it's you know quite easy actually so it's not it's not that hard as maybe they might think uh, definitely and i know in my audience are people that don't self-custody because mm -hmm. they tell me in the comments <laughs> uh, right <laughs> um and I stress it out a lot in the podcast. I always like, uh, if there's someone on that is connected to hardware wallets, that connected to self-custody, I'm always asking like, what's the reason why we should do it? Because if we figure out why, the the how and what is getting way easier and mm -hmm. people like figure mm -hmm. out because like, ah, you have some hardware wallet providers, you go on the internet, buy them, you have some uh, educational content about it. The how is not that uh, difficult these days, especially exactly. if it enhances. But people seem to have like, to why not like it's not big enough so why do we need uh, hardware wallets why do we need uh, self custody right so what i also mentioned in the presentation was sort of the key message of what i was trying to say is um i mean i can say it like not your, not your keys under your coins i know this sentence is famous but I, let me maybe try to explain because really there are, i think with race of institutional adoption of bitcoin i think we see more and more products in the market I'm basically talking about ETFs as an example that sell it as a bit, bit, you know, sell it as a Bitcoin almost or people, newcomers basically are coming to Bitcoin and crypto and to the industry might think as Bitcoin, but it's actually not a Bitcoin. And the ETFs that they don't even hold, they don't custody uh, those Bitcoin themselves, right? So, so I just think it would be quite important uh, for the users and the customers, you know, to understand this difference. Because I understand there are some pros and cons of, of, of both, but obviously I believe that holding your own Bitcoin is, is superior to anything else, right? Because, uh, and I gave some examples, mm, you know, first you have the hacks, right? So, and these hacks, I, I mentioned a number of like 15 billion, um, you know, a dollars worth of Bitcoin and crypto stolen or, lo or got lost, let's say, in, in 2022 alone through hacks, bankruptcies, uh, you know, all kind of scams. And and just recently, I think uh, your listeners might even know this Japanese, you know, major uh, exchange, DMM Bitcoin, if, I, if I'm if i not butchering the name, uh, got hacked of $300 million uh, worth of Bitcoin just, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So, so those are real. And because of the nature of Bitcoin, uh, once those, you know, coins get lost, there's no way to, I mean, there's no insurance policy. Those, those are basically lost uh, for for good. Um, and so that's why, you know, protecting your own, own private keys in, in self-custody and it, exactly in, with products that are made and, and are really good at this. Yeah, it's basically superior. I think it's better. Uh, another reason is basically if you, the farther you get from real self-custody, the more, 
fees you might pay on those CDS or some fund managers or custodians or whatever you basically pay you have to pay because there's some intermediary of course it's their business you know for them to hold your keys so and I would like the main also reason I think is basically Bitcoin was built as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system so you know if that sounds familiar that's exactly what it is you know that's how Satoshi uh, invented it and I and I don't think we should respect it just you know because it was you know Satoshi's idea and we all respect him, but because it makes sense, it's 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 great, right? It's that's the innovation of of basically money, um, the hard money. So yeah, so I think that's better basically. And that's uh, uh, all the risks uh, that you pointed out as was on the individual level. Uh, do you s also see uh, on a greater scale risks, for example, like when you see the gold history, the confiscated gold basically to stabilize the, the US dollar, mm -hmm. uh, the, like, what was it, the exec executive order 6102, uh, which they made, is, is that at some point when, when governments see like, oh, there's like a big tank in the Coinbase account, there's a big tank in all these ETF accounts, and it's like all use some some countries uh, some companies do you see a risk in in that at some point because the us dollar is crashing uh, the fiat system is crashing and and governments like ah let's let's take those bitcoins uh unstabilize it and uh sell it that way to the gov uh, to the public mm -hmm. i mean i don't see it honestly happening in like let's say the western um democracies or something like this because i think Exactly what we saw this year uh, was that you know a CC basically approved ETFs and and I think I mean and and, and we heard you know the president's the presidential candidates talking about yeah. it so I think it's it got to a point where this would be quite hard even like politically because I I can I cannot see that happening because Wall Street wants to get you know piece of mm, you know basically Bitcoin in terms of you know selling selling the products uh, as Bitcoin so I'm I don't see that happening in unless you know something super crazy happens you know i don't know like politically or really like maybe not uh, like in democratic nations um but but yeah i think the as i mentioned the institutional adoption is is gone quite far with bitcoin i think it's good for i mean it's a good marketing for bitcoin for sure uh, but i would still recommend to the individual you know owners to try to keep those you know keys um for themselves so um sorry i just stood away from the question but but uh, i i don't think that that would have happened i i don't see that but i might be wrong and then the individuals that have the bitcoin uh, themselves they cannot be uh, af uh, affected by that uh, exactly yeah, that's uh, that's like an, another reason exactly. on, also on an individual level exactly. um now let's talk a li little bit about uh, what w treasure uh, the company uh, that we are also now sitting in uh, just announced at Bit bitcoin prague uh, i really liked the, the the video but what is like uh, all the underlying stuff like why did you make those design choices we have now a touch screen instead of the the, mm -hmm. the buttons um let's dive a little bit deeper like what was the thought process uh, behind the new product mm -hmm. so uh i would say there is a natural continuum from two different angles one is our Trezor Safe series, which last year we, we launched Trezor Safe 3, uh, which is a smaller device with two buttons, a smaller display, no touch display, you know, etc. cetera. Uh, our two previous models are Trezor Model 1 and Trezor Model T, T. And exactly the second angle is basically the Trezor Safe 5 is also a continuum of a Trezor Model T, which is built in, um, the Trezor Safe 5 ha has a similar shape. You know, it's the shape is iconic for us now. so. So that's sort of the continuum of, of, of that, that, that product specifically as well. Uh, and yeah, Trezor Safe 5 is now our flag flagship product in terms of it's the sort of the most user-friendly hardware wallet that we have ever built is, as you mentioned, the, the, the color touch screen. It has the haptic feedback. So, you know, all those sort of uh, interactions with the device is really, are really easy and nice. There are a lot of animations, swipe gestures uh, and, and stuff like that. So. Um, and also I would say we focus quite a lot on like really, I would say beautiful design, you know, in a sense, like, uh, to make things really like pretty. Um, and so that's where we spent a lot of time sort of, um, uh, you know, working with the specific form factor of the, you know, the device and, and how it, 
uh, users, you know, interact with it and, and for them to really enjoy sort of this consumer electronics, almost like mainstream feel, feel of it. What, what do you see as uh, the, the next step? Uh, we talked about right before uh, we recorded with you, we recorded with Michael Sale, and he actually touched on uh, the scaling possibilities of, of Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And he touched on the possibility that like, what if Apple encounters Bitcoin and they all of a sudden like, ah, we, we want uh, them to custody their Bitcoin with the devices they already have with Apple and they build uh, um, the hardware wallets and the Apple Watch and the iPhones and, and whatnot. Uh, do you imagine, because this was the thought that I had also with Treasure, uh, the, this thing looks more and more like a phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, is is that the future where we're going? Where like uh, the, the in treasure iPhone? Uh, yeah. Where we're going in, in this direction? Where like uh, a treasure is built in in the devices we already use and and, and have with like an Apple Watch and an, an iPhone and then there's an iPad and if you want to sign a transaction, you need two of those. Right. I don't see it happening any in any near future. Uh, and there's a couple of simple reasons for it. Uh, the hardware wallets are specifically built as a sort of sim simple devices uh, that have one, you know, single purpose devices in that sense. Uh, and the reason is exactly to kind of try to disconnect them from anything that could um, mess with your keys, right? So once, and, and that's by the way, why we build everything out in the open as an open source as, as much as we can, uh, because, you know, we are basically audited by all the experts uh, and the community and anybody can sort of, um, you know, kind of check on how things are wired, you know, if I if I put it this way. But if you are talking about, you know, companies that like Apple, et cetera, they, they would never allow you to see what's happening there. Uh, so from security standpoint of view, it's not honestly great. It's not, it's not the best. And obviously these devices are doing so many different things. So you could finally easy, f you could easily probably find some, some back doors, you know, to that specific use case, which is like keeping your uh, private key secure. So I, I you know I don't see that happening any any in any like near future. I don't think you know technically we are uh, we are able to do this on the hardware level. On the software level, yes, there are certain you know co-signing a multi-sigs etc. Where you know maybe you have one key you know somewhere uh, on some hardware on you know some other hardware. You know those those are more re realistic. But I would still think we should you know use uh, like specific devices for this. Where do you see the the, the future going when we have like? Uh I mean, I ask that myself a lot, where, where is Bitcoin self-custody in, in general going? Mm -hmm. We also have the constraint of like uh, Bitcoin on-chain transactions will be expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will move to other uh, layers. So maybe the problem is not there because on-chain self-custody will be a, a thing of really big institutional or banks or like big individuals. Mm -hmm. um, but where do you see this? Uh, shift in in in, in self-custody uh, solutions do, do you do you imagine like a, a, a treasure in 10 years or like what's the future vision for for like that yeah so we would definitely like to uh, uh let's say implement some second layer you know and and be able to process or le let's say for our users to be able to process um uh transaction inexpensively let's say or make a transaction inexpensively directly from treasure and it's true that we are looking at certain, you know, basically whatever is happening in, in, in terms of like scalability on Bitcoin. But as where we will be in like 10 years, I have no idea because they're <laughs> honestly like to be like, completely honest because there are, you know, many different proposals. Uh, it seems there are some pros and cons in all of those. And I don't think we have like a single bullet solution at this point, you know, you know to be to be honest. Uh, and, it? and it's totally fine because um, Bitcoin is such an early uh, technology. It's such mm -hmm. an early thing, and uh, there's a lot of questions still in the in, yeah, the, yeah. in the whole community, in the whole uh, technology. So like, um, it, it's hard to think of uh, of the future and how it all turns out. That's why I'm really curious, uh, always, so like like how how do we do it in the future and, and right. have all those different opinions and then we'll have like a lot of different perspectives on the topics and we we might have figured out a direction yeah. uh, which is is really cool um before we go uh, in into other topics uh i want to give um people an understanding uh when they should self custody uh, uh and, and and what you personally recommend as like an uh 
okay on, on when you have that many uh, like uh, if if you have if you're on that level you should figure out like maybe more multisig uh when you should you get your your uh, first hardware wallet mm -hmm. because obviously if you have just 10 euros in in bitcoin you probably right. don't buy a, a treasure <laughs> uh, because the investment is higher than than the thing that you're carrying right. on it um so like what what do you usually recommend like when does it make sense to get a treasure when does it make sense to uh step up the game and have multiple devices signing something right so i like to think of this as because we are a global company or really selling everywhere uh, i don't think there are specific sort of numbers that you can put on this it really depends on your income, your assets, you know, all that stuff. So I don't think there's a general number that we could use. Uh, maybe just in the case, like uh, how much is the uh, is the hardware wallet, right? So that's a, a base that you can you can work with. Um, but also, I would like to see, or I would love for uh, newcomers coming to the industry even consider starting with uh, with the hardware wallet directly. Uh, and I will try to explain why. By the way, I'm totally not against people starting, you know, on exchange if it's you know just a, a little for them, you know, right? So that, that's perfectly, uh, I think, perfectly fine to kind of try to experience, you know, not have some uh, some worries about all this crypto stuff. Um, but I think, you know, because we, we are really implementing uh, also some cool features in our uh, software ecosystem, you know, you can really buy or uh, sell exchange uh, coins on through Trezor Suite, which is like the software uh, that we that we have together with with uh, the Trezor devices, so yeah, w I would love to see when newcomers consider this as an as an idea. Uh, just and I will try to explain why because they could start sort of their journey there. We'll try to explain them everything uh, about self custody, you know, Bitcoin, etc., and they can really sort of step up um, and become more experienced through something that is. In my opinion, again, superior way of you know owning Bitcoin, and also you can keep sta stacking basically more on. I mean, not just uh, like the funds itself or the assets itself, but also the, like the knowledge, you know. So you mm. kind of you know experience more really owning those private keys, you know. And as you said, we are very st er still early, and especially again with this institutions going to Bitcoin. It really might skyrocket. I, I, I man, imagine in you know two two bull, bull runs down the road, and I think it would be those people who will you know get into self custody early, um, you know, and really will have their coins again in the private keys. Might I think benefit quite a lot from this, from the knowledge and also from starting the journey, you know, in in self custody. And education is so key. I yeah. told that story a lot of on on, on my podcast, but. Uh, I fought for three years straight that Bitcoin is a scam. <laughs> then uh, I, I kind of acknowledged that I ran out of arguments against that. <laughs> and I was like, on a Friday, I was like, I want to figure out Bitcoin out and mm. want to explain to my friends why Bitcoin is a scam. Yeah. Uh, and this weekend I discovered Bitcoin. Monday I bought the Bitcoin. <laughs> Tuesday I bought my first hardware wallet. Back then uh, it was a few years ago. Please forgive me a ledger. <laughs> Perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, this is I, I did this only. I did not understand the ethos of Bitcoin. I did mm -hmm. yeah. not understand why self custody makes sense. I was a stock guy. I I, I just like had it on on an exchange because right. with stocks you don't have an, an, uh, any other option. But uh, I did this because of learning. I just like transferred from Coinbase to Ledger, from Ledger back to Coinbase, back to my bank account yep. uh, to see everything and, and get get to know Bitcoin. And that's why I also recommend actually getting uh, a hardware wallet as soon as you're coming into Bitcoin space. Yep. I bought it literally like four days before I, uh, after that I thought it's a scam uh, where <laughs> nice. I saw my first videos nice. uh, and I made a lot of mistakes. Uh, but I made those mistakes with small amounts of bitcoins, with small yeah. amounts of, of money to to learn from it. So I, I really love that you you said that point with, with education. Uh, it's an underrated one, and you should definitely definitely do that. Not when your whole net worth is ten euros, uh, but uh, if if you have uh, uh, more than that, and, and you really want to get to know uh, and, and bitcoin, it's uh, it's an amazing uh, way to do that. Yeah, and thanks for saying it because yeah, I obviously obviously agree. And again, uh, just to you know, give basically kudos to because like those two percent, 
I mean, of course, we are competitors with other companies, etc. But still, I would like to kind of give kudos to other hardware wallet makers as well for, I mean, trying to make better devices and bigger, be, be, better user experience. You know, it's it's it helps improve us. I mean, it's to, it's healthy to have you know competition. And again, us as the whole you know hardware wallet industry, we are still like small, and I think mm. we can grow significantly. And I'm glad that we are we are really bringing these. Uh, new cool hardware was that I think people might really enjoy starting their journey sort of with Bitcoin, right? So s straight away. Uh, yeah, we, we talked before in the, in the car about that. Uh, it's like when you have a whole market and 2% have a hardware wallet, mm -hmm. like you don't even have to focus on your competitors because you have 98% of your market that's basically free available uh, and you 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 just have to market to the those bitcoiners who don't have a self custody which is it's pretty awesome actually uh, when you have such a uh, an amazing marketing opportunity yeah yeah exactly so i think instead of killing each other we definitely should and i mean and i think we we, we all of us do kind of focus on on you know moving people from the main i think target is really from exchanges to hardware world i think that's the sort of the easiest and the shortest uh kind of segue to to uh, to proper self custody uh so I, so yeah I, t i totally agree and again on the other side it is also good to have a little bit of you know competition and and if if you know one of us you know fucks up whatever it's it's good like i think to i mean it's again healthy and and of course we are businesses and competitive businesses uh, but ultimately you know like yeah we are still early and still small <laughs> in this sense. So. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin, keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code Rob Robin at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss slash Robin to get your bitbox. And if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup, your security setup, and maybe even your citizenship setup, you have to talk to the Bitcoin way. If you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash Robin, you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure, if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable, or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody, and how to be a secure, sovereign individual in general. And for those of you who are in search of a new Bitcoin exchange where they can buy their Bitcoin from, I recommend my personal Bitcoin exchange 21 Bitcoin. With code Robin, you get a hefty discount for all your purchases in the future. This, this also protects the consumer because uh, if, exactly. uh, if, if, if Treasure does something uh, that is not good, uh, you can basically count on that, that uh, other uh, companies yeah. like Ledger, Bitbox will um, will point that out exactly, in, in, exactly. In, in somehow. Yeah. So it, it all, like competition is always good, but that like, I think with a Bitcoin libertarian audience, <laughs> you <laughs> really have to do that. Yeah. Is. Um, another thing th that you launched, um, I think it's the first time that you have this, a Bitcoin mm -hmm. only device. Is that the first uh, time it's not the first time we so with Treasure Save three, the previous model, mm. we launched a limited edition, only 2013 pieces. That was sort of a testament or like a celebration of the history of the company because it was established in 2013, and uh, it was like a it was limited edition. It was really successful and because it sold out within the first day, basically within the first 24 hours. Mm. So we decided because uh, we saw this big demand to. Um, to launch the BTC only uh, devices as you know, kind of start standard product in, in our portfolio. Though those people who bought the limited edition, they don't have to worry. Like in that, that would be somehow I would miss something because those uh, limit that limited edition was really like engraved. There was like s numbers, so so it's it's cool. And they also all got um, like a. a a uh, written note from from Slash and Stake, the founders of mm. of of our company, and the founders of basically the whole industry. Mm, I love it. Um, I find I find it fascinating that 
hard wallet um, producers and providers are making more and more like Bitcoin only, uh, firmware Bitcoin only uh, products. Mm -hmm. um, why is that? Like because like if you have a treasure and you can use uh, Bitcoin and you can use all all the other coins also, mm -hmm. um, it's basically like I can just do Bitcoin with that. Um, why do we need uh, a Bitcoin? Like sounds like a weird question when I'm on a Bitcoin only podcast. But why do we need no, no, this no, no. Uh, the Bitcoin only? I device? perfectly understand the question. So I think it's uh, one is I think Bitcoin maximalism that is basically don't want to see any. Uh, pardon my language any shit coins you know in in there in the interface so that's definitely one i think and it's a it's a it's a valid <laughs> valid mm. thing you might even be worried you know why it even supports something like from security reason even security wise it's 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 all safe you know you don't have to worry if the, if, if if the firmware supports other coins it's you know uh, it's perfectly safe um so I, I would say this is barely the main reason also Specifically with Trezor, we have the orange devices, so you know it's it has, has some, let's say, color to it as well. So you can maybe hold your uh, Bitcoin on really like an orange device, and maybe uh, you know the other coins on on something else. So you can even uh, differentiate the two. Uh, but yeah, I think that's the kind of this sort of ethos, as, as you mentioned, is, is the is the is the main uh, m main reason. And and you know, quite honestly. I mean, we like it. We are Bitcoiners. You know? <laughs> of course, we have also altcoin teams and experts on, on altcoins in, in our company, for sure, because we are protecting you know keys not just from from Bitcoin but other cryptocurrencies. Even though we are quite conservative in that regard as well, by the way. But but yeah, we like it. We like it ourselves. So <laughs> we like to build products that we you know enjoy. <laughs> uh, there's a question that I never asked because I was never in my head because I'm Bitcoin only. Is there a difference uh, between all the cryptocurrencies that you support where like uh, I have to do a different thing on the device? Just then, like, is there a fundamental difference in, in holding the keys of like some altcoin, Solana, Ethereum, Cardano, than do Bitcoin? Uh, yes, but that being said, I'm not an engineer, so I would not yeah. be able to give you like <laughs> details. But I know, yeah, the teams need to sort of. Uh, there's always something different that you. Uh, I, as far as I understand, cryptography-wise, it's pretty much similar, like the co concept, like in terms of security. Uh, but of course, there are some nuances and, and differences between between those networks, and that's why also why I probably said like we are a bit conservative, so we kind of see the given network that we would sup support. Uh, has tractions, has users, you know, has trading volumes and all that stuff, because we want want to see that it's not going to die out, you know, the next week after the release, right? Because <laughs> I mean, quite honestly, we even have or had coins that are basically d dead, you know, like, in, and we are supporting them in, in firmware, so we just like discontinue them because, you know, was there was some hype in the past, maybe like 2017, I think there was like this altcoin craze mm. and then yeah it's and it doesn't make sense and it's a defocus for us it's yeah it's you know we should be have like have like a laser eye focus on the really important stuff so yeah uh, definitely and um i was in the situation where a short period of my time last year i was a head of a branch mm -hmm. uh, kind of a ceo of a small company really small company mm -hmm. uh, so i know that there's always this question like oh how much revenue come do we, do we do in the next quarter how much revenue yep. are you expecting the one year and, and you also as the treasure ceo um how how much do you calculate and how much do you see the like my question basically is how does treasure prepare for the upcoming uh, or the next bull run that might happen in the next like 18 months and it might be really crazy it might be not be that crazy and right. uh, do how do you calculate for that and how do you prepare a treasure for something like that yeah it's a it's a very relevant question for a hardware business because uh, hardware is hard as it's this famous sentence in all hardware companies uh, and it's hard because well because it's hardware <laughs> 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 you know it's you need, you need a stock basically you need a physical material like when you're a software company uh you know it scales pretty well it's it scales um, sort of infinitely um, well, to a certain degree, because maybe some backend capacity, blah, blah, blah. But like, yeah, it, it scales well. If if you fuck up, you just make a new release and you fix it next week or even the next day, you know, like a hotfix patch or whatever. In hardware, uh, no, though that's way, 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 way more complicated uh, because all those components that get on the PCB and, you know, the motherboard and into the device, you really need to have, 
you know huge quantities of those if you're if you are talking about bull market because the demand uh, as we see in bitcoin itself like it can jump you know it can skyrocket from one week to another uh, and by the way bitcoin is doing the best marketing for us so whenever uh, bitcoin is pumping uh, we we our sales are going up right so so it's you know if if you look at the graph and it's it's pretty much correlated all the time so and that means, uh, and these components, by the way, some of them are, uh, uh, what you deal with is the lead times, uh, which basically means, you know, some of the components might be, might not be in your inventory within the first, I don't know, even weeks, month, it can take even longer. You, you might have some components that you wait really six months before you get them from the producer, the manufacturer of the actual component. Um, so you have to, you know, put all this in, on one pile then start producing devices, which also takes some time, obviously, you know, to put all the components together. Uh, you test them, uh, you make sure that everything is secure, you upload the firmware, um, or, you know, you know the, uh, yeah, basically, uh, the software that would allow you then, you know, to upload the firmware, etc. And, uh, and this all takes time, you know, so it's not, again, it's not, we are not talking about weeks, it's, we are talking about months or, or even more so that's hard <laughs> that's hard with the hardware and what we do is we we also need to support it with cash so we need to have a lot like a really good cash flow in terms of to be able to support this and really manage our cash flow well uh, to make sure we are able to build enough of these when the demand picks up uh, I love that I see the the patterns through all the the Bitcoin companies because everyone is telling me Oh, when the price is doing stuff, our sales is doing stuff. Yes. Uh, exactly. Is it also like because you said like when it's going up, is it also when it's going down? Like, yes. Uh, yes. It is. It is the same. I actually, you said it uh, better than I. Uh, you, yeah. you mentioned whatever doing whatever Bitcoin is doing. You know, it's, we are. It it has impact on our sales as well. So, but I just say uh, just one say, well, say one thing. When I joined the company, you know, two thousand minus like nineteen or something. Um, we're basically like an operating loss um, and because it was it, it was bear market so and it was much 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 smaller team and now uh, even in the bear markets we are still doing pretty well even with much bigger team so obviously you know Bitcoin is growing and so it's also sort of the absolute uh, I guess the price of Bitcoin uh, and the more money the more people that are uh, in Bitcoin and I guess doing more trades, et cetera, et cetera, that are basically keeping uh, our company well, even in the bear market times. Uh, I love it a lot. What do you expect from the, the, the bull run? Is, is, uh, do you have some something in, in mind what, what what's coming next? I mean, it's like there are two sides. It's like, obviously there's the price, which is yep. impossible to predict. You can uh -huh. throw out numbers uh, and everyone has his own numbers. Um, but there's the only other part where like, what happens fundamentally? Like uh, we have now countries in, we have now publicly traded companies in, we have ETF now in. Uh, is is there anything that you would be like? Uh, I think that will happen in Bitcoin in the next like five years. Yeah, well, I definitely see the institutions moving in for sure. So I guess banks will be next <laughs> in that sense. Uh, I'm qu quite sure of that. Um, so for sure, I think also. And I'm hoping like more individual users as well. So if we talk not just like through intermediaries, but really people that would get ideally into self-custody, ideally of in hardware self-custody. Uh, so yeah, the growth I think is, is quite obvious. I also hope we are past the time where, well, I don't have to hope. I think it's it's uh, it was always like that. It basically, Bitcoin will stay with us. That's for sure mm. <laughs> from basically day one, but um, like in terms of uh, you know the technology how how it's how it's done, uh, and and I just yeah I just hope more people would would own you know their private keys, and and I hope there will be a lot lot more of them basically like a lot lot more I mean people you know moving to Bitcoin. And uh, it, it's also like because you, with private keys, um, we talked about a little bit before the recording about the importance of a peer to peer network like as uh, Satoshi actually intended it to do yeah. uh, that's so important and a lot of people feel like now with the institutional money coming in with etfs and 
I get a little bit tired, honestly, of, of the Twitter, like, oh, so many inflows of the ETFs today and so many outflows and yeah, yeah. why is the price not right. like, um, I, I never I never saw a single sheet of paper where the inflows, like, I never followed that. Um, get Does the, the, the ethos of, of Bitcoin get lost a little bit uh, or is that just maturing? Uh, is that just the asset maturing? I, th I guess it's, it's both and depending where you sit on the on the spectrum of why you are in Bitcoin, uh, that's how you look at it, right? Like how much it bothers you, either of those. So yeah, I mean, Satoshi himself, I mean, quotes these, uh, you know, banks being bailed out, you know, in 2009, you know, after the 2008 uh, financial crisis. And I think it's kind of pity that we are honestly <laughs> I mean, uh, what's happening even now and, and will probably happen more in the future, as, as we said b before, is, uh, I mean, with the banks and stuff, I mean, if it, you know, s you know, looks like fiat, if it smells like fiat, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, I mean, I'm, t I'm not saying it's fiat necessarily, maybe it's like some security, etc. but like, you know, it's not Bitcoin. So just, you know, get into Bitcoin and <laughs> just, you know, so... Yeah, I kind of share the same sentiment in the, in that sense, right? Like mm. it's, uh, I think it's, I guess it, it is our job as the Bitcoin companies to really try to educate as many people as we can to not, you know, jump on these products that are called Bitcoin, but they are not Bitcoin itself. Yeah, just wrap Bitcoin or paper Bitcoin or I will use uh, however we want to call it. And I also like, I, I made an interview with Grafton from Wexel mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and it's like part of Satoshi Labs, which right, is, right. Uh, is a parent company of Treasure. Yeah. Uh, if, if people are not familiar with, I, I love, loved a lot of that interview because he really is like, it's peer to peer. It's like, <laughs> it's that, like, yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. it's not the ETF. Yeah. Uh, and I loved uh, a lot of those, uh, th those things. I love also that like Treasure is involved with uh, Wexel and, uh, yeah. uh, is supporting those kind of efforts. Yeah. Uh, are you, are, how do, is there like um, a greater connection with Vexel for your, for yourself? Is it like, uh, do, you, do you do you also see that uh, Vexel is something that is uh, really cool? Or? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I'm, I'm wearing a Vexel um, band as well here. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, I mean, we like them, of course. We are, you know, in the same building, uh, etc. So, so yeah, and by the way, I would say, um, I, I don't think, I mean, I'm not saying you know, we should do things because Satoshi wanted us to. We should do things Satoshi uh, said because they make sense because it's, it's uh, again, like after financial crisis, how many financial crises were there, you know, like mm. uh, uh, the fractional, you know, um, reserve banking and stuff like it's, I mean, it's kind of, I feel like we could run into a situation when we are repeating the exact same, same issues. Uh, with basically centralized institutions, you know, um, basically fraud, you know, because, uh, I mean, I'm not an expert on financial markets or anything. I just see, I mean, it's like, a, it looks like a pa pattern al almost, right? Like, so so we have this amazing thing, it's called Bitcoin. We could, you know, really, ho you know, hold it yourself, uh, peer to peer, all that stuff. And then you would just lock it in, you know, some massive institution and that you would uh, trade security. So, you know, uh, you would trade it as a security. It's, I mean, like, why? <laughs> you know, like, you know, so I don't know. It's um, so. So, yeah, I, I obviously like the the peer to peer uh, stuff that Vexel is doing. I think it's it's great. Uh, amazing. And before we come to the end routine, before we come uh, to the wrap up of the, the, the podcast, I'm always asking one question to uh, almost all of my podcasts. It's not, but <coughs> uh, it's not really my uh, end routine. I'm asking that question because I think Bitcoin are unique people because they uh, see now something that is really early and mm -hmm. might get a really great adoption later on. Mm -hmm. So they are critical thinking, they're really open, they have some uniqueness to them, they're freedom oriented. And I'm asking always that question, um, what does freedom mean to you? Wow, it's a, it's a nice question. Um, I think it's the individual <laughs> ability to do sort of whatever you want, uh, as long as, of course, you are not stealing rights from somebody else. That's something like this. I, I mean, there is some better sentence or a quote on this, but 
yeah i think it's it's kind of this like by the way i personally love mountains a lot i you know like fly paragliders mm. i love mountaineering and it's and the the reason why i do this is exactly this because like i love this you know ultimate freedom <laughs> that you're kind of even like look at the world from really like from from high up <laughs> literally <laughs> and so and the same thing i think comes with uh you know like living in the financial system or i don't know how to put it like in in a world where basically some crazy authority would not sort of limit you you know your creativity your you know ability to move places um your ability to tr transact in a way uh your ability to you know uh hold assets that that you want um so sorry maybe i'm saying it super va vaguely from all kind of <laughs> perspectives but uh yeah i would say i would wrap it up as a as a freedom is you know my sort of ability to do as i will um and yeah enjoy enjoy life the way you know it should be i guess <laughs> I, i love that and the second part of that is uh is i want to have peop uh, bitcoin learn from each other and that's why i'm asking what are you currently learning or diving deep into mm -hmm. besides bitcoin like besides bitcoin what are you what is your passion what is your deep learning whatever direction you want to go uh, into uh, besides bitcoin what are you doing right so so my two main hobbies besides bitcoin is like climbing uh flying the paraglider which i like uh and jazz uh as a you know learning jazz basically because mm -hmm. it's like never ending thing it's like there's so much you can learn and you have to if you want to play <laughs> in a band and be able to improvise and stuff so those are probably like those those two yeah <laughs> instruments and sports are usually coming up <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah I, i mean i love it and also especially in sports i also love like endurance sports in terms of like you know to be able to like cover great distances i love like this like um running in the mountains and, and stuff so and again i feel so free when i can do that right <laughs> like, uh, so so i totally totally love it and i also kind of like this um the sort of athletic approach to it where you kind of have to you know make sure that you are like training well eating well uh, etc so i kind of like this sort of systematic uh, approach i'm not too i'm not too crazy about it i just like you know uh, basically getting better every time i like to improve in everything i do so that's the way i think about it amazing and we have an end routine uh and i unfortunately uh forgot or i got the chance to ask sailor uh because we have an end routine um where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest oh okay nice. uh, but <laughs> i did not get the chance to ask <laughs> michael <laughs> sailor the question so i will just give you the same end routine question that michael okay. sailor actually got okay and he got the question what are you current what do you currently have that you really cherish and really like that you could not buy with money yeah like the main honestly that first that comes to mind i, I know it's like super lame i guess but <laughs> it's health i mean and i'm knock on wood but i had actually a huge paragliding crash in <laughs> in li like like end of last year i mean i have like like Uh, my collarbone is like there are screws there i have some broken ribs you know punctured like pneumothorax and stuff so and i kind of realized you know like being to able to move well and you know it's not it's not given also i guess i'm <laughs> also an age unfortunately where i mean i have friends you know passed away um so you know i kind of mm. also like like to travel I, i mentioned before we talked you know i was in peru i see like people work in maybe much harder conditions um than than us right so their their sort of health care is probably not uh it's definitely not uh the same as as we have so so yeah i don't yeah i think it's quite important to be honest because it's really without this like you wouldn't do you, you couldn't be like a bitcoiner right like you couldn't do anything so yeah i think it's important uh, uh, i love it a lot uh, the best analogy that i ever heard is like whatever wealth you have it's like a one in between and then there's like a lot of zeros afterwards and the one is the healthy you take it away you only have zeros yeah. you don't have nothing yeah. and it's uh exactly i love yeah. it a lot yeah, yeah. 
Um, perfect. Then uh, I usually ask like, where can people find you? Where can people ask you questions? Where can people ask treasure questions? Where can people ask you directly uh, questions when they have uh, something uh, on your mind? On right. Mind? So I'm not a huge on social media, but like um, Instagram, that's mainly like <laughs> mountaineering, <laughs> mountaineering uh, photos uh, and sports. Uh, Twitter, th that's yeah. There, it's mainly like Bitcoin and, mm, and Tesla yeah. related. But again, I'm really not a huge there. I'm not. I don't post that much. Uh, I should probably do more. Uh, I think my PR colleagues would like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm on, on LinkedIn as well. But again, by the way, LinkedIn, it's like yeah. As I heard like recently, or read this this funny comment, and I, and I actually liked it a lot. <laughs> the guy said like. You know, I, I haven't been on a, on a LinkedIn in a while, and it's like one of the most successful uh, Czech entrepreneurs. And he, and he said like, I haven't been on a LinkedIn in a while, but it's interesting how many super successful and amazing people there are. And he said like, <laughs> everybody's just basically boasting about themselves. And I was like, yeah, it's like totally right. And I will, from now on, I just want to say, you know, all the stuff that I fuck up every you know month, or I will just say the stuff that I really, really fucked up. So. So yeah, if you want to follow that, all of all my fuck ups, then you can also find me on LinkedIn. I, I love that <laughs> approach, really. Like it, that's that's really cool. I love it a lot. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's also funny how uh, um, like CEOs and, and and leaders of companies are basically like they they have to be kind of a personal brand th these yeah. days and then be on stage, be on the podcast, be uh, be on that. Right, right. Uh, I mean, I I, I love that. That uh, gives me the opportunity to speak with so many great people and <laughs> do so many good <laughs> stuff. But uh, yeah, I love it uh, how how it goes and uh, LinkedIn. I. I don't do too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's <laughs> kind of it. bullshit in a way, but like, uh, I guess all social media are in, <laughs> in some way. Yeah, yeah so. definitely. <laughs> uh, perfect. Then, yeah, thank you, uh, thank you so for much. being on and thank you for taking the time and for everyone watching and listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye bye.